let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. In Jeremiah's Prophecies, The End of the United States by Charles J. Brannan, Jeremiah the prophet has been reborn in spirit to prophesy to the United States about the coming judgment it faces. He takes his words of 2,500 years ago and addresses them specifically for the United States. His message is simple, repent or be destroyed. He takes the events of today and shows us what is happening at present and the consequences that will shortly follow. Charles was born, grew up in Alabama, participated in track, field, as well as cross-country running in public school, also joined the prestigious Auburn High School Band, where he became a first-chair flute player. Upon leaving high school, he went to Auburn University, where he earned BS degrees in aerospace engineering and chemistry. He earned an MS in materials engineering and entered the Ph.D. program in mathematics. He's worked as an engineer for the Air Force and Navy, and then with the Chemical Engineering Department at Auburn University, where he designed the test U.S. Department of Transportation uses for testing asphalt and aggregate. He also researched capacitors and batteries for the space shuttle program. He's preached many sermons at Abundant Life Church, where he was an elder at one point. He has moved on from that church, is being prepared by God to start a new ministry in the near future. Charles J. Brandon, author of Jeremiah's Prophecies, the end of the United States joins us on This Week in America. Charles, welcome to the program. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. This is such an important topic, and I'm looking forward to our conversation today. What inspired you to write this book? Where did this idea come from? Why did you think it was so important? Just one day, God just spoke to me, and he said he wanted me to write the book. It was about rewriting the book of Jeremiah for the United States today. And out of that came the book, Jeremiah's Prophecies, The End of the United States by Charles J. Brannan. If you're Googling that, that's B-R-A-N-N-A-N, book available at pageturner.us, Amazon, the usual places. Uh, Charles, what specifically is the United States doing that God sees and, and needs to judge? Well, the U.S. has departed from following God. The founding of the country, he he honored him and put his principles into our institutions, made up our government. Although we weren't perfect because man is fallible, and, but our government was based on biblical principles. So we had a thing like slavery, but we were able to solve that problem by having a war. Because slavery was embedded in the culture, but, but God's principles were put into our government originally. What are some of the events that we can expect to happen in the, in the coming days? What should we be looking for? Well, we are seeing things that I mentioned in my book already manifesting. You see the economy slowly failing, increased debt. And with increased debt, I mean a debt, a fall has to happen. And there will be power shortages, just like you're having in California today. And with people moving further radical in other states, more power shortages will certainly occur. And of course, there probably will be terrorist attacks on the like or cause power shortages. And at some point, God told me several years ago, a tsunami is going to strike the California coast. And so... Well, there, are a lot, there are a lot of signs, aren't there? Yeah, there's a lot of signs. Um, Chaos is going to be coming when the economy falls. Just, it's just not going to be a pleasant place to live. All of this is laid out in Charles' book, Jeremiah's Prophecies, The End of the United States, Charles J. Brannan, B-R-A-N-N-A-N. Book available, pageturner.us, Amazon, all of the usual places. We see in the news, we can read the news and understand the significance, what is happening. What must we do to avoid coming judgment? What, what can we do? Well, it's very simple. When God calls on his people to repent. God says in the Bible, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear their prayer. He'll heal the land. 
and that is is so important. Our guest on the program is Charles Brandon, author of the book Jeremiah's Prophecies, The End of the United States. Uh, the book is available wherever books are sold. How do the events of today relate to those of, of Jeremiah's day? What similarities do you see? In Jeremiah's days, God's people were apathetic toward God and his word. They didn't stand up against the idol worship going on in their society. And any time you have people who do not put God more important than what they want, then that just is an idol in their life. And that's what is rampant in this country today because people are not obeying God. They're not paying attention to him. They're letting morality slip. And so in Jeremiah's day, we had one good leader fall by a bad leader, and so God gave them leaders that reflected where they were morally or spiritually, and we have in that today. You might have a good president, then you have a bad president. Today, that's the evil that's ruling, and they're not doing what's best to serve the people, and they're just trying to increase their power over all of us, and so they ignore us and just put what they want to do in preference over the people of the United States. The people who are in power, and is it will they listen to this message? Do you think is this message getting through from you and 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 other people? Today's present crop of leaders, they're never going to listen. You know, God's people, they're going to have to start running for office and just kick out people from all both parties because neither party serves us. The ones that rule the both parties. Their own, they're out for their own interest. I can guarantee you that at least half of the Congress members are paid by countries like China and the like. And so they just not, these people we have now are not going to prioritize the American people over their own interests. They're concerned more about their pocketbook and power. Charles Brandon, our guest on the program, if you're Googling that, that's B-R-A-N-N-A-N. The book is Jeremiah's Prophecies at the End of the United States, book available at uh, pageturner.us, Amazon, all of the usual places. What will happen, Charles, when the United States, if the United States does get judged? What do you see happening? Well, if there's, as God's judgment falls in this country in full force, Washington, D.C. is going to be destroyed, as mentioned in my book. We're going to have foreigners enter the country, and they're going to be patrolling the streets. Our economy will have collapsed. Banks will be closed. Militias will be forming everywhere, protecting the people that make up the militia and their families. And food and gas will be short in shortages. No, there will be no electrical grid. It will be destroyed. And life is going to be very difficult at that time. Many will flee the land, too. Yeah, boy, it's really something to, to think about. I mentioned the impact on the United States. Will other countries get judged? And what countries can we expect to, uh, to get judged as well? Well, in Jeremiah's day, Jeremiah mentioned to other countries that would also be judged through Nebuchadnezzar. And today it's going to be the same thing. Today you'll have countries like the Arab nations, some of them anyway, Iran, uh, Syria, the Palestinians in Gaza, uh, the European Union, England, Canada, as some of them. Really. What happens if the United States fails in terms of who fills that vacuum? We are a leader in so many categories in, in the world. What happens if, if the U.S. falls? Who, who steps in and, and takes our place? Well, when the United States fall, there's going to be a vacuum of power in the country, and God's going to shift power to the one organization that does exist today, which is laughable at the moment because the United States is still in power. But it's going to be the United Nations. God's going to give power to them, and they'll send troops into our country to police us, and we're going to learn then what subjugation really means. Is there any hope for the future if we do get judged? What you're talking about, a very stark reality uh, that you bring out in your book, Jeremiah's Prophecies. Uh, what's the future if we, if we do get judged? How can, how can we turn it around? Well, he offers hope, you know, when, before they fall. He offers hope after we fall also. But he needs God's people to repent and turn this nation around. And we can avert judgment if we do that. But if we don't, then we're going to be judged. And God's redemption mentioned in my book will also 
at one point restore the people back in the United States after the judgment is finished. And there are people that will return to their homes and their homeland from those who fled the country. However, Washington, D.C. will no longer be a major city in this country. How long do we have? How close is is something, do you think? You you go through, outline some of what's happening in the news, and the list goes on and on. How Does that mean we're, we're getting close to some type of uh, judgment? Well, this is my opinion, of course. Uh, I've heard the prophecies about Donald Trump returning, and I think that he will be reelected. But after he's elected, I think the evil will rule again. In that point, there will be no redemption. Mm-hmm. And then the judgments will come. So we're talking about 2030 or something. When you did the research for this book, Jeremiah's Prophecies, The End of the United States, what impact did this have on you? You've got this knowledge. You you understand what is happening after doing the, the research in biblical studies. What impact uh, does all of this have on you? What impact in writing this book, what, ha- what impact has it had on you? Not a great impact. I mean, the book was not successful originally because um, I had to finance it myself. But it, it's God's timing and everything, and that's what I didn't know, his timing on this. And so, uh, basically, there's been not much of an impact on me at this point in time. What what can the average person do? What do you hope the takeaway is? People read Jeremiah's prophecies, and you mentioned the people in power. Most of us are not people in power. We don't know people in power. We don't know. We don't have enough money to get to the people in power. What what's the takeaway you hope, and what can the average person do to uh, to maybe reverse this? Well, as I said before. Uh... The leaders we have now, are they're not going to change. Uh, very few would ever be turned back to God. It's going to take the God's people taking action and not being apathetic anymore, reacting when, for example, they take our rights away by our freedom of assembly when they close the churches. You have to act. You have to do what is necessary to take power from them and put yourself in power. And that means people running for office, among other things. And you're replacing these people. Are you able to watch the news, or do you look at that and just sort of shake your head that you know, you went through the litany of like one story after another that has great significance on all of us and our future? How difficult is it to to watch the news and see all of these problems unfolding every day before our eyes? Well, certainly not easy. I mean, you know that these people are destroying us, and you know we have a little time left when they do this. But at the same time, I know at some point, God's going to judge them and take them out of power. And so it's a tight line we live right now. The book, Jeremiah's Prophecies, The End of the United States by Charles J. Brandon. Book at uh, pageturner.us, Amazon, all of the uh, the usual places. The link's on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Are you working on another book now? Is, is there anything, Charles, you're working on uh, writing-wise? Not right now. God has plans for me to start a ministry, and I'm having this fight, very powerful spiritual battle for that because of the, the enemy has attacked my body, among other things, and I've really been suffering a lot lately. So, and yeah, it's, I got enough to fight right now. <laughs> Boy, it sounds like it. And yet with all of that, you're here today to discuss this book and the importance, Jeremiah's Prophecies. You've you've done the book. You're doing the promotional, the marketing part of the book now and getting the word out there to, to impact people. How uh, are you optimistic that maybe that we can we can turn this around? Do you you see this happening? How what what are your personal thoughts? My personal thoughts is we can be have a good few years left. Like if Donald Trump came back then, there were, things would improve some. But at some point, we're going to enter the book of Revelation's time. And then there's no redemption then except for what's described in the book of Revelation. You mentioned health issues. How are you doing now? Are you in, uh, are you okay? Well, I was diagnosed with cancer, so I'm having to fight that. 
and it's caused me a lot of pain and I have other pain that's come on me too, but that was all part of the test God had me through, even though I had faith to stand against cancer and the like, it was given, Satan was given permission to attack my body, but he's not going to kill me because he does not have permission to kill me. Well, I hate to hear the condition, but I, I love the, the fight and the determination that you have. And we certainly wish you the, uh, the very best in this battle and getting established with the church that you were working on and uh, the work that you've done in, in Jeremiah's prophecies. How long did it take you to, to get this book together? You mentioned that it's been republished. How long did it take you to, to get the book written and get it out there now where it's impacting in a positive way people's lives? Took me a couple of months to write and then another month or so to get the book published. So about four months, maybe. What's the feeling like when you finish a project like this? And here's this very important message that you have in Jeremiah's prophecies, the end of the United States. And the book is, is finally published. What type of says, well, I, I assume there's a, a great deal of a personal satisfaction that it's accomplished. It's out there and it's going to make an impact. Well, it's, it's good to be able to finish something and do something you haven't done before. I mean, I've written before uh, scientific journals, but yes. not a book like this. But it, it's a nice feeling to accomplish something, but then you have to go immediately to work on trying to sell it, and that was never a success to start with. Well, the book is out there now. The book is uh, at pageturner.us, amazon.com as well. You'll find the book, uh, uh, the usual places. And again, by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can link on and, uh, and get all of the information there. Charles, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. We wish you uh, the best of uh, uh, success in your battle against cancer. And I, I love the, the attitude going into this and uh, uh, what you're doing in writing this book and, and out promoting it and talking about this important message. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. You're welcome. Charles Brannan has been our guest. That's B-R-A-N-N-A-N. The book is Jeremiah's Prophecies, The End of the United States. The book is available, pageturner.us, amazon.com, all of the usual places. And if you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can go to uh, the Page Turner page and get all of the information there on Charles' book and order it there as well. If you're Googling B-R-A-N-N-A-N, you're listening to This Week in America, and we're back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.